Good morning, Sunnyside. I would like to thank you all and welcome you all to today's new Sunday service. Thank you. Good morning. Today's announcements are um, youth choir rehearsals are will begin on um, after Labor Day and as well as the Saturday program. Um, Bible studies are this Wednesday at 12 noon at the church and Thursday at 6.30 via Zoom. Scholarships um, are due on um, Scholarships are due today, and on September 11th, they will be announced. And line dancing um, begins on Monday from 12 to 2 p.m. And come and join us. Thank you. Amen. Amen. How y'all doing this morning? Is there anybody in this church that's just glad to be in the place today? Amen. Is there anybody that's just grateful that God woke you up, put air in your lungs, got your blood running through your veins, you able to think for yourself, you can move, you got your being. So I'm just glad to be in the house today, and it's so good to see everybody today. So here on this Youth Sunday, um, let's not just put it all on the youth today, amen? Amen. Let us all come in with anticipation of God doing something amazing in your life today. Have an anticipation of the Holy Spirit coming in and changing something in your life today. Let today be the day that the Lord has made. And the Bible said that we are to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. So as we stand and before we get to our praise to worship, if you could stand, uh, we would like to recite our call to worship. And from there, we are going to having some good old church. Amen. 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 The call to worship is in your bulletins, and it reads, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet should stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen. Praise and worship. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on. Praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. And everybody in here has breath. Amen. Amen. Everybody in here has hands that, that they can raise in thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Voices that they can lift together in song. The Bible says we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Amen. Yes. And I said, as I said last week, there is no we without me. So you're, each one of us is required and needed to bring this sacrifice into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 And I just want to praise him. I just want to praise him forever and ever and ever because he has been so good to me and even more than that just because of who he is amen amen come on i just want to pray i just want to pray
a personal thing. Amen. 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 Can't anyone you, tell it like you can what he's done for you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. This next praise song is singing and saying, great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. And we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise to you because of what you've already given us. Amen. One of the things I always say is the amazing, one of the many amazing things about God and what he has done in creating us, he's already given us everything that we need to praise him. We don't have to go out looking for it. We don't have to go out purchasing it. It's already been provided. Amen. And the thing is, when you praise him, there is a raise in praise. You cannot be down and praise God at the same time. Amen. So it is because of the breath that he put in our lungs that we offer up this praise and this thanksgiving. Amen.
when he gave his son. Amen. Amen. I pray that we will continue in that spirit as we go forth. God bless you. to be reading the scripture. So we'll be reading Isaiah chapter 51, verses 1 through 3. The year of the Lord's favor, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim goodness to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from the darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our Lord, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy, instead of mourning, and the garment of praise, instead of the spirit of despair, they will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Thank you. guess it would help if I cut on the mic. Uh, so this is our youth, and we are coming before you right now to sing Completely Yes by Sandra Crouch. Amen. Amen. My soul says yes. That's what Jesus is looking for. That's what God is looking for. A yes, a complete yes. Amen. Amen.
I'm actually going to have you guys stay up here um, because this is Youth Sunday, but this is the Sunday before back to school. So some of them are starting Monday, Wednesday, and then the weeks following. So for our prayer today, um, yes, please still come with any other intentions, but we're going to say a special prayer for the youth in this school year and them going back. Um, so if we have any other youth in the audience, Zaylee, come on up. Um, Billy, come on up. Maya, Mariah, y'all want to come up? Uh, anyone else? Um, come on up, please, and um, let's just make sure we put covering over them as this new year starts um, for them. So. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all remember when y'all was this age? I sure do. It wasn't long ago either, but um, <laughs> some of y'all might, might take a little longer to think back than me, but at some point in our life, we were all at this age, right? And I'm almost sure a lot of us, I ain't gonna say 100%, but I'm sure a lot of us in here was doing the same thing that they were doing. We was up here singing. Some of us probably ain't wanna do it. Mama made us do it. Some of us were singing low, had the microphone way down here. We didn't want nobody to hear. Man, so y'all understand what it's like to be a youth in the church, right? And it's also sometimes intimidating to see it's only a little bit of us and a lot of y'all. When I say a lot of y'all, that means it's a whole lot of grown people. And sometimes kids don't feel comfortable. At least when I was growing up, they made sure you was uncomfortable being around grown people, right? But we don't want to put that fear of, of us into these kids. What we want to put is the fear of the Lord, amen? And the fear of the Lord is what's going to teach them how to be respectful. You don't have to tell them they got to be respectful. You give them God and they'll end up being respectful. It teaches them how to keep going. It teaches them how to, when they're a little nervous and a little scared of a crowd, to just close their eyes and see Jesus. And then you guys can see the, the fruits or, of the gift that God has given them. So today as we pray, uh, again, um, Sister Dominique said that we, if you have any issues, any ailments, any problems that you want to give to God, by all means do that. But we're going to specifically pray for our young people today. And I'm looking at some guys up here that's anywhere between already in college, going to college for their first year, some of us going to different grades, grade levels, some of us going to a different school. So guys, it's a, it's a transition that's happening. And it's always a trend, and it's a challenge, too. So, young people, I want you guys to know, one, that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If you don't know nothing else, when it get hard, when things get, get, get down, just know that God got you. Jesus got you. And that song y'all just sang, Yes, Lord, it'll take you so much, so long in your life. Like, just yes, Lord, whatever it is you want us to do. So, right now, if we can't just, if, if you got any power in you, I want you to just reach your hands towards these young people. And I want you to just close your eyes and think of Jesus and how strong and how mighty and how powerful he is. And right now in the name of Jesus, God, we come to you thanking you for your might and your power. You just being a God over everything. You know us from the day we were conceived. You knew us before we were even conceived, God. You know every little inkling about our life, God. You say you have numbered the hairs on our heads, God. So you know all about us. And right now, God, you know all of our issues, all of our anxieties, all of our problems, all of our mental issues. Lord, you know everything. And we're giving all of that to you right now. And specifically, Lord, we pray a special prayer over these young people, God, that you will first cover them with your blood, God, that you will protect them from all hurt, God, all harm, all danger, both physically and mentally, God, that you will give them the strength in their bodies to get up every morning and to be on time to school, God, that you will give them the mind to want to go to school, God, and to be open to learning, God, that you will give them the mind to articulate everything it is that they need to their teachers and to the ones that are helping them at the school. God, we ask that you give them a spirit of leadership, God, so that they are not drawn by their friends, God, who may be doing 
things that are not godly, God. We ask that you allow them to set a standard, God, so that everybody know that they are not the same, that they are particular, they are peculiar, God, that they are your chosen vessels, God. And right now, God, we ask that you cover their hearts, God, that you cover their minds, God, that you give them the intelligence, God, and the understanding they need to pass all of their classes, God, to, to be a light in their classroom, God, that they see Jesus when these young people walk through the door, God. We need young people to see Jesus, God. So right now, we ask that you allow your spirit, Jesus, to go into these young people, God, that when they smile, their friends see Jesus. When they walk in the room, the teachers see Jesus. When they come in the school, the custodial staff know that this child is a child of God. I feel you, Jesus. Right now, God, we need you to let these guys be a standard in the classroom, God, to let the devil know that although you may be running crazy right now, although you may be running rapid not right now, we ask that you right now, God, just bind the enemy right now. Any spirit of, of doubt, any spirit of less than, any spirit of suicide, any spirit of, of mental illness, God, we bind it in the name of Jesus, God, and we send it back to the pits of hell from which it come from, God, and we speak grace, we speak love, we speak happiness, we speak joy into the life of these children, God. We thank you right now, God. Be with the teachers, be with the administrators, God. Cover the school, God. Put a shield over the door so that if anybody think they want to walk in and do anything crazy, God, that, that you block it before they even come through the door, God. We ask that you cover them right now, Jesus. Protect them, God. Cover them, God. Cover them, Lord. Talk to them while they're in school, God. Speak to them as they are going to school, God, and let them know that it is you that is talking. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say Amen, 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 amen. I would say y'all could be seated, but y'all got another song. <laughs> amen. So a question, they're going to ask a question in this song, and it is, where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? Amen? Because I'm on, they're on the Lord's side. Amen? Amen.
Can you hear me now? <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's give the youth another hand while I try to get this mask off. Um, right now, I'd just like to start with prayer. Say, dear Lord, thank you for bringing us all together today. Thank you for allowing us to see another day. As we move forward with a new week, I ask that you be with us all. Give us strength. Give us power. Give us might in your name. Please remove me right now um, and allow your word, whatever it is, to come through. And just use me as a vessel and make sure that Dominique is nowhere to be found. In your name we pray. Amen. So today was the first time, it's funny, I had um, a title, but it kind of got messed up because it said this is Wednesday, but it was supposed to be this is for Wednesday, but I was like, oh, okay, I'll roll with this is Wednesday. So what happened was um, the verse that Samaj did such an awesome job in reading. Um, <laughs> it's the year of, Lord, of the Lord's favor, and I'm going to read just like a snip, uh, a clip it version of it. Sorry, without my mask, my nose is running. <laughs> okay, so the part I'm going to focus on is the part that I have first read, which is um, to, per to comfort all who mourn, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. The oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for display of his splendor. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. And I was excited. Because that sounds awesome, right? Because I wasn't having a great day. But I read this on a Friday. So by the time Wednesday came, <laughs> it was a little bit more hard to believe all of this. So that's why it's called This Is Wednesday. Because that's what this message is for. When we're not that excited and these things don't seem as realistic, that's when I'm calling it Wednesday. Because you're in the middle of the week. Could be the middle of your life, the middle of a obstacle. And that's when we really need to pay attention to these words of what God is promising us. So the key to me was a crown of beauty instead of ashes. And the word that came to me was, how can God give you beauty for your ashes if you won't let go of the ashes? Now, ashes usually symbolize to me something that has gone, has passed. After a fire is burned, there's ashes. When someone's cremated, there's ashes. They're symbolic of like the past, right? But we like to hold on to the ashes. So the first thing is we have to forgive the ashes because sometimes ashes can leave us scarred. And these ashes can come from things we've done that we're not forgiving ourselves of doing for things that others have done to us and created ashes in our life, burn marks in our life that we can't let go. And we won't even allow God to give us beauty for them because we're holding on to the scars and the pain of those ashes. But he says we can use those ashes. We can use those to our benefit. He uses everything. It says all things work together for his goodness. So that means that all of those pains, all of those hurts, we can use them to build us up. It's not easy, and that's, again, why this is for Wednesday, because when it gets hard, you're going to need some help of knowing how to use those ashes. And the first thing for that is accept the road that's ahead of you and let go of the past, let go of those ashes. Accept that God is bringing you to a new day, a new time, that, yes, you went through that yesterday, last year, or even when you were younger, but guess what? Tomorrow is a new day, and God has promised you a whole new set of joys and wonder and splendor, and he wants to bring you joy instead of despair. But he cannot do that if we don't allow him in. If we still sit all day and think about what we did yesterday or what someone did to us yesterday and how we're going to get back at them or how we want to make sure we are better than them. But we need to focus on God and what he's calling us to do. Because when we focus on that, that's when he can build us up. And that's when the next step comes is rebuilding from brokenness. Because when ashes are there, something was broken down, which means now we have to rebuild. 
And it sounds really good and really easy, but rebuilding is one of the hardest things. When you see storms, where you see hurricanes and this disaster left, do you think it's easy for those people to rebuild them homes? No, it's the same with us. We are temples of Christ. We are bodies of Christ. And when people destroy us, when they knock us down, when they do things against us, rebuilding is hard. And that's the part we don't talk about, is that it's not going to be good days all the time, that we are going to have despair, we are going to have sorrow, but we need to rebuild. And how we rebuild is we stay in his word. And we read these things that remind me that he will give me a crown for my ashes if I allow him to. If I let go of them, if I forgive. And that brings me to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 9. I won't read the whole thing, but it's funny. Um, my grandma was telling me that God only reveals things in part. You don't ever see the whole picture. You see parts of it. And in 1 Corinthians, it says that what you see now is partial. What you will view later will be whole and complete. And that's when God comes. But it also shows me that we don't know why we're going through certain things in life. And it's not only for, it's not for us to figure out, but for us to use and allow us to bring us stronger. And for the youth, it made me think of um, during COVID, I had a lot of time at home. So I started cleaning and then I found my old diaries. And so like, I've always liked to write, but I was like reading through them. And things that can happen at your age or even younger, can dictate how you are when you're an adult, when you don't let things go. It was one entry in there that said, um, I think it was like lunchtime at a, I was in high school and someone said, well, that's why she doesn't have any friends talking about me. And yes, it was probably to be mean, but that affected me for the rest of my adulthood. And I feel like through this COVID time, God has broken me down in that aspect where I felt alone. And he said, guess what? Even if you don't have any friends, I am your friend and I'm here for you and you don't need anyone else. But I'm giving you beauty for your ashes because you're focusing on what someone said to you um, 10 years ago. But look at the long list of friends I have given you now. Look at the people who are more than friends but are family to you. But if I would have just stayed in that moment, I might not have went out and became friends with other people. I might not have been outgoing, but you have to allow God to replace those ashes with beauty and not limit you to where you are. And then I, I think about my sister. She's always been smarter than me. Uh, so I, um, I know because of that, she did have some difficult times in school because you know everyone likes to hate on when someone has something you don't have. And what I think about is I always admired when she became a teacher, she cut down the bullying so much. And I'm like, you don't know how many lives you changed, how the devil meant for ashes to destroy you and then allow other people's lives to be destroyed. But you allow God to work in your life and you prevented so many other people from being hurt the way you were hurt because you allowed God to work because you accepted that and you rebuilt. And yes, it will be hard days, but most of the days you say, I'm going to conquer this because no one will go through what I went through. And that's what I mean by building strength. And at the end of 1 Corinthians, it says, um, there's three things that last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And to really receive that crown of beauty for your ashes, we have to love. And the first thing we have to love is ourselves. We have to love ourselves enough to not let people treat us any type of way, to not let people talk to us any type of way, to love ourselves enough to say, I will still give you the love of God, although you have not given it to me. I love myself enough to know that I deserve to be respected and I reserve to be treated like a queen or king because I am a child of God. And that is how I'm going to portray myself no matter what you do to me. And loving yourself leads to loving others and allowing other people to see that love through you. That I might be hurting right now, but guess what? I'm still going to be there for you. I'm still going to allow myself to comfort you because I don't know what God is doing, but I know that's what he's moving me to do. And the last part is have love for your journey. We all are on different journeys. We all are on different paths. And we're going to go through pain and despair and how it says here. But it says again, we're getting 
beauty instead of ashes, and we're going to get a double portion instead of a single or half a portion that we're getting now. God will deliver us and give us a double portion, but all of this is only if we allow him in and if we let go of the ashes and allow him to give us that beauty. So the real test is not today when we're hearing this for the first time, but it is on Wednesday or whatever Wednesday your Wednesday is, when you're having a bad day, when people cut you off on the road, where you lost your job, where someone just irritated you on the phone, where your brother or sister getting on your nerves, what are you going to do that day? How are you going to use your ashes to move forward that day? And how are you going to show God's love that day? That is what this is for. Thank you. Good word, great word, great word. Beautify ashes, man. It took me to uh, my backyard, and um, I got this fire pit that I burned wood, and you know I like to play in fire. I shouldn't have when I was younger, but that's one thing I used to like to do. I played with fire. All right. Luckily, I didn't get burnt too many times. But um, one thing that I did with the ashes after the the wood had burned down pick up the ashes and you got a little bark. I started growing a garden in the backyard, right? And before I planted my seed, one of the uh, old remedies that the, the old men used to tell us back in the country is you take the ashes and you throw it around your plants. You put it in the dirt. And what the ashes do is like a fertilizer. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And the fertilizer got with the seed that we didn't see at the time. But the ashes were poured on top of it, and you water it, you treat it, and as it starts to grow, you don't see the ashes anymore. You start seeing a beautiful green bud that just pops out, right? And if you keep watering it, you start seeing the fruit produce off of the vine. And we forget about how that vine and that fruit that we're eating, how it came apart. And the way it came was at the very beginning, you put the ashes of your life on the seed that you're trying to grow now. And some of us got some ashes we just been wallowing. We just been making the angels in the ashes like we're in the snow. And we got piles and piles of ashes. You ever seen a pile of, of, of paper get burnt? Them ashes get high, right? And some of us got a whole bunch of ashes that we've been living in and don't know how to use it. So the Holy Ghost is telling me today that for you to take the ashes that you have in your life and in your house and in your family and you think of the seed that you want and inside that seed when you plant it, throw a little bit of the ashes, the, the hurt that you've been through, the pain that you've been through, the issues that you've been dealing with. Put some of those ashes, hallelujah, put them ashes on that seed and watch how the seed grow. Watch how the provision comes. Watch how you forget about the ashes, but every time that you see that seed and that you see that fruit, you indulge the ashes. So don't be scared of the ashes. Use the ashes. That's why God give us our hard times. That's why he give us those, those times where we don't know what's going on. That's why sometimes he makes it seem like you don't have a friend in the world but I have a friend in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. That's just saying all of the ashes that you have, guess who will bear them for you? Jesus. What a privilege it is to carry everything. Everything, y'all. Not some things, but every single thing, the good, the bad, the great, the ugly, the ones you don't want to talk about, the ones you embarrassed about, take it to the Lord in prayer. So right now as you're standing, right now as you're standing, we want to open the church for you to plant your ashes. And, and it just came back to me, Pastor, I think this is the same box, right? 
That's the same box. At the very beginning of the year, we took some paper and we burned it. And we gave it to God. But see, a lot of times we do this stuff just in, 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 in formality. But mentally and spiritually, if you take those ashes and you spiritually plant and use the fertilizer of your pain to grow your gain, you will see God in everything. So I know it's you, son, but we're all children of the Most High, right? So if you're here today and you need Jesus, you don't know Jesus. You don't even know where to put your ashes. You're like, man, you talking foreign to me. Well, there's a man named Jesus who walked this earth over 2,000 years ago. And he walked it without blemish. That's a blessing in his own. He walked it without fault. That's a miracle in his own. And he walked it so that when we do have our ashes, when we do have our problems, when we do have situations, when we do say stuff we shouldn't say, when we think things we shouldn't think, when we get mad and we want to do stuff back to people that we should just give it to God. He sent his son Jesus so that we could be forgiven of those sins. And we can walk in the beauty of holiness. So right now, if you don't know who Jesus is and you want to know him, we offer him to you right now. Because in these last days, they used to say we're living in the last days. And we are living in the last days. All we really need is Jesus. It's time out for, for preaching the, the, the happiness, the joy, even the pain and the sorrow and the condemnation. People need Jesus. At the end of the day, you need Jesus Christ. So if that's you today and you want Jesus, please come down. Everything, everything to God in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Father God, right now, in the mighty, mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you right now. And we come into you right now on behalf of our brother and our sister, God. And on behalf of everybody who, who are standing in the pews right now, knowing that they need a miracle from you right now, God, we come and intercede for them right now. And we ask, Father God, that you give them comfort. You give them strength. You give them peace. And after you give them that comfort, that strength, and that peace, God, that you give them the weapons of their warfare, God, that you give them a, a, a toolbox of praise and a toolbox of worship ask we, that you give them the word of God right now so that they can fight the mental issues and the, and the physical issues and the, and the neighborhood issues and the family issues and everything that they're dealing with God we ask that you give them the strength to fight God and we also asking God that right now if it's in your will that you perform one of your miracles God that you do something that none of us can see, none of us can do, none of us can even think of or conceive, God, because we know that your power is real, and we know that you can do anything that you want to do, God. 
So right now, God, if it's your will, God, we ask that you take anything away that's not like you in the hearts of our people, God. We ask that you take anything away that the enemy may have implanted in us and make us feel less than, make us feel like we're nobody, make us feel like we can't come back to God. God, we ask that right now that you treat us like you treat the prodigal son and let us come back home on that path, God, to righteousness. Let us come back home on that path to goodness. Let us come back home so that, Lord, that we know that we may have messed up. We may have been out in the slop bucket with the peers, God. But bring us back home, God. And when we come home, God, we ask that you don't blame us, God. That you don't talk about us because you don't talk about us. That you love us, God. And every day give us strength. Every day, God, give us strength. Give us your power and your anointing, God. Give us that anointing that break the yokes of bondage, break the yokes of habits, break the yokes of generational curses, God. Bring the anointing that will change the lives immediately, God. We ask right now that the pool of Bethesda is just stirred up right now in the community of this church, God. And that we all just step inside the pool and see the miracles that you have for us right now, God. Stir us up, Jesus. Stir us up, God, so that we can be soldiers for you. In these last days, let us stand up strong for Jesus. Let us stand up for righteousness. Let us stand up for glory. Let us stand up for holiness, God. Let us stand up for you, not for your church, but for you, Jesus. And everything that goes with us, God, they see you, Jesus. We break the, the, the strongholds of religion, God, and we ask that your spirit, because it's by your spirit, God, that we are set free. So we ask that your spirit is released on this earth. In your mighty name, God. In your mighty name. In your mighty name. I need some help, church people. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Because it's in your name that the demons got to go. It's in your name that we break habits. It's in the name of Jesus that we are set free. And we thank you, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It's done. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Somebody that was standing out there, you ain't come up here, but that prayer was for you too. So I need you to clap your hands like you received the Holy Ghost today. I need you to raise your mouth and give God some glory. Receive the change that you've been praying for today. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, cover your people, God. Thank you, God. Cover your children. Cover us, God. Cover us, God. I can't keep moving because I just need God to know that we need his covering. In my prayers, I just been hearing protection and provision. Protection and provision. In these times we're living in, I know it's fearful if you're living in carnally. But God is going to give you protection from every sickness, every virus, every enemy, every bullet, every anything. God going to give you protection. And he's going to provide for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, bro. Woo. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We coming home, y'all. I'm telling you right now, God's children are coming home. We've been in the slot bucket and in the hall pen too long. Too long. And I don't need y'all that's been in the church house. Don't listen. Don't be like the brother who stayed at home and did right. And when the brother who went out came back, he started talking about him, getting jealous, wondering why God, why you doing this? He went, God bringing his people back. And not just to the church, I'm talking about his people that's going to walk out there in them streets and stand up for God. Some real ones. I'm talking about some real ones. Some fighters. Some soldiers. He bringing them back, y'all. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Brother Sean. Amen. Amen. Come on, Brother Sean. Amen.
I'm reading the offertory scripture. Since it's taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 through 8. Ready? Begin. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he decides in his heart to give, not reluctantly or on compulsion, for God has a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that at all things, at all times, you will abound in every good work. Would everyone please remain standing, face the wall, follow the instructions of the ushers. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Walk with me, Lord. Walk with me. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give back to you a portion of what you have blessed us with. Bless those who had to give and those who had not to give. We pray that you will bless this offering and use it for the building of your kingdom here on earth. Amen. Feel all right? All right. Come on. Amen. 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 I appreciate you, Sunday. I appreciate Sunnyside. I appreciate our pastor who's over there. I tried to tell him to come up here and talk. He's still, he, he, he in it. He can't move. He can't move. I ain't mad at it. Amen. I just thank God for his spirit, y'all. Amen. And um, I really want God's people, black, white, Latino, Asian, Whoever, I want you to really open your hearts to his spirit. Because we are spiritual beings just going through this natural experience. I think that's a song. Who's that? Donald Lawrence. We're spiritual beings. We think. And everything that happens comes from our mind. So this week, this entire week, I want you to practice thinking of the goodness of Jesus. Don't think about your problems. Don't give your problems all that strength. Because when you think about something, you gives it strength. The more you think about it, it begins to control you. So if you think of Jesus, guess what's going to happen? He's going to start controlling you. And when Jesus started to control you, there's not a demon. There's not a person. There's not a job. There's not a friend. There's not a family member. It's not an issue. Not a sickness that can control you. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. So if you think on Jesus and his joy, you will have some strength this week. 
And that's what we have for you today. Peter says, silver and gold, I do not have. But what I do have, and what he had was Jesus. It changed that person's life, amen. So as we're standing, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, we got one more. People who said the joy of the Lord is my strength is in Nehemiah. After they had rebuilt the walls of the church, after they had come from the ashes, after Jerusalem had been destroyed, they said the joy of the Lord is my strength. And what you see today are the walls being rebuilt, bringing back those that were lost. <laughs> bringing back the captives that were taken away. Now they're coming back and they will change this church and this community. Oh, don't you depend on any man, any pastor, any preacher. You better depend on God because he is our only hope and he is our only strength in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm full. Bringing back the warriors. Amen. Amen. This morning, I, I, I can't let you go. Without, I got my other mama here sitting there in the middle of the aisle. She knows where she belongs, right in the center. Okay. This is Mama Clem. Uh, mama Clem took me through a lot of Wednesdays. A lot of Wednesdays. Just in a, say a word. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm very thankful to be here today. The last time I was here was 2019. I buried two of my sisters. I went home, I had a stroke, and then I had another stroke, and then I'm here today. I thought that I would never travel no more. But I started to thank God for my pain. When I was pain and pain and pain, I said, how are you going to thank God for these hurts? But I started thanking him for my pain. My children didn't want me to come at first. Then God sent me a nurse that helped me along the way. And, and I, I asked her if she would travel with me, I would pay half of her fare. My children said, if she go with you, we'll pay her fare. And I want to say one more thing. I pray for Dyke and the church all the time. Everywhere my family is, I pray for church. I was praying for Dyke for help, but little did I know, he had already helped his. <laughs> that, that God used his daughter and his son-in-law to help him to build the church. But God is a builder, we know that. But he used people, ordinary people, like Dominique. I can't remember the husband's name. But anyway, thank God. But I want to say I got here with me my nurse, my two daughters, and my nephew over there. Amen. Are there any other visitors besides Dwight over there? <laughs> any other visitors? My name is Jolene. She's from France. Je suis très contente d'être ici. Je suis très I am very happy to be here. Amen, amen. You all, we've had good church. I hope you you had some because I I didn't had mine, and I, and I am I'm telling you officially I am stepping back some, and letting these young folks do what they did today. Let the Holy Ghost flow, and us get out the way. Yeah. Amen. Let us stand. Preachers. All right. He 
said preachers, but I got you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We also have our other mother in the back. Miss Peach is my brother-in-law's mother from Texas. She's been in town. Thank you so much for being here. We love you. And any other visitors, just thank you guys for being here and all. Y'all don't think he walking off right now, but I just want to shout out my, my pastor and my father-in-law. My, my father, you know, I, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday. He said, man, you couldn't have prayed for a better in-law, man. I said, you know what? You sure ain't lying, boy. Like, this pastor in front of everybody, I thank you. I love you. I appreciate everything that you, you, you do for me. And, and the main thing you do, you just allow me to, to grow and develop how God want me to. Now, one time if you ever say, this is what you're supposed to do, this is what you need to do, you always allow God to use me, and I thank you for that. So thank you. Thank you. Give your flowers in front of everybody right now. Amen. <laughs> Hearts and minds are clear. Father God, we thank you for just being with us today, God. Thank you for your spirit coming into this place, God. We thank you for the ashes in our life, God, that develop and grow and build into beautiful creatures and creations. This place today, God, we ask that we not leave your presence, but you continue to walk with us and talk with us throughout this entire week. Bless this church, bless their families, God, and bless our communities. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let the church say, amen. You are dismissed. your brother and sister. Act like you love somebody in here. Musicians, we thank you. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Video, audio, we thank you. Beautiful. He's been Yes, he has. Yes, he has. Boy, you're going to make me shout again.